Welcome back to Factory Sealed. It is April 19th, 2013. You'd think I would get it right the second try. Oops. You'd think. And I'd be a little bit more confident, but at least Jess didn't mess us up this go. Well, Shut that's up. Good. Way to go. Way to go, Jess. I've been out of practice. My name is Eric Peterson, and joining me tonight from the distant future of almost tomorrow, Jess Clarkson. The person who screws everything up. Yeah. What is it there? 11? 11? Uh, almost 11. 11 p.m. Yeah. Man, it's it's barely it's 8. 10, it's, almost, it's almost 10 p.m. here. We're, oh. we're, we're spanning almost half, well, probably a quarter of the Western Hemisphere. That's right. Aaron Crazy. Robinson is back. I'm back. Hey, guys. Back in full force. That's right. This is No injuries either. It's great. Nothing? Oh, jeez! Paper cut. That's about it. Yeah. Paper cuts are the worst. Deal with it. Yeah. I was trying to figure out the last time we actually did a normal three-person show. Gosh, it's been like uh, four weeks, I think. Well, it's been longer, longer than that because two. Yeah, weeks. longer than that because that's right. Jess was gone that one time. Two weeks ago, mm-hmm. we did Elias. Yep. And then and a week before that, two weeks before that, we did Batman. And there then, was a spot was just me and you. And then you and I. Week. And then before that, it was you, me, Matt, and Jess. It's been like five oh, shows. Forever. Wow. Oh, my God. We gotta That's crazy. We got to fix this. Well, my my life is back to some semblance of normalcy with the move done and and uh, the new job settled. Mine is in a, mine's in a wreck right now. I just got transferred to another store. Yeah, I heard you and, got uh, just uprooted. Uprooted, and uh, it's been. I've been very busy, man. Very busy. Did you have any say in that or not? Not really. No. They basically just called you up and said, "Hey, Aaron, you're moving." Yeah, pretty much. They said, "You know what? You're doing so good here. We need you to come fix this store." And I said, "Okay." Are you sure that they didn't just say you're doing a good job as a cover to be <laughs> like you're doing really crappy? So we're going to put you in well, a crappy store. It's kind of hard to do that when my store's ranked number four in the company. So. Well, there's still three people above you. Yeah. What's Ben's store ranked at? And why isn't he uh, here tonight? What's he doing? Uh, he is, uh, what, oh, what was he telling me? Oh, that's right. He was, uh, I don't remember what he was. I can't think of anything clever right now. I think he uh, was, I think he was practicing his French tickler. Oh, that's probably it. You're right. Okay. <laughs> huh. The only reason I, I thought of, know. the only reason I thought of that is because of the conversation Jess and I had earlier. Oh, really? That's yeah. an odd conversation. Well, she was asking me how living in an apartment was. I'm like, oh, you hear everything. And uh, she's like, oh, everything? Like sexy time? And I'm like, no, not not sex. But, you know, nobody's on the other side of our master bedroom yet. And mm. uh, Jess was saying something about how she'd have to hear her old tenants just just going at it all the time. And apparently, what did you say, Jess? She was what? She was a screamer. Like mm. top of her lungs? Um, not like that, but it was awkward. Like awkward. So I told Jess to turn it into a contest and try to out scream her. And it didn't happen. Missed opportunity. (laughs) Yeah. Did you say you've done that before, Aaron? I've done I've done that contest before. See if you can be louder. Yeah. Huh. Learning new things about you. Aaron. I was back on me and my uh when I had a roommate. Wait. Oh, okay, I'm I'm putting so like a, I'm putting we the had, pieces we had, together. We shared walls, and then you know, he his girlfriend was really loud, so then I brought my girlfriend over, and then yeah, we had the contest. See, I had a roommate when I lived with Ben. His name was Chad, and I'm sure you've met Chad, right? Aaron, have you ever had the pleasure of meeting Chad? I don't think I've ever met Chad. Chad was the type of man who he liked to play a game called Gay Chicken. And it would be, if you make eye contact, you got to go in for the kiss. And oh, this guy, no. 
never back down just <laughs> just to make people super uncomfortable and, that is uh, amazing he would wow. and he would do that out in public too like we'd be going down to the bars and his girlfriend would be with him and we'd be talking we'd make eye contact and he'd just start going in for the kiss oh my gosh <laughs> like i lose <laughs> i lose every time <laughs> i am so amazed with your friend right now so he wow. i come home one day because he and i shared a wall and i saw a bunch of dust on the floor i'm like what the hell is this so i go into chad's room and he's got he's got a drill and, a, and like a screwdriver and he's punching a hole through the wall i'm like chad what are you doing he's like dude i need a peephole <laughs> what <laughs> like, you're a sick man chad <laughs> Yeah, the last little bit took it a little too far, yeah, but it's, it's Chad. All right. So, anything new with you, Jess? Um, I got a tattoo. Did you really? <laughs> I'm like a glorified badass right now. I don't Wait, even is know it... if you can handle me what? on the show. Did you get a dolphin? Is it like a true no. tattoo, or is it one of these spring break henna tattoos that gives you like necrotizing fasciitis or whatever? Like it was a tattoo with a needle, Wee! and pain and skin. lots of screaming. Not painful at all. Did you get it on your kneecap? No, I got it on my ribs. How big? Um, it's like the sot. It's like huge. Is it? No, okay. Does it have any combination of barbed wire, roses, crosses, or Japanese characters? All of the above, in the <laughs> glory. <laughs> <laughs> There's rainbows and like shooting lightning bolts coming out of it. Yep. And unicorns. Oh man. Oh, so many unicorns. What okay, what'd you what'd you really get? Yeah. Um, I got a tattoo of my cat's my dead cat, which is like <laughs> morbid. But um her nose and whiskers. Oh. Um I got that tattooed on my ribs. Is it because those, I am obsessed. Is it one of those tattoos where they that you see online where they go to get a picture of their their fiance or their baby on their side and they turn out looking all morbid and disfigured no i didn't want it to be like an actual illustration of the cat so oh. you like you know the, the whiskers and the and the nose a little bit Is yeah it... you know those really lame faces that people make with like the like the cat little cute faces with the eyes and then the three mm -hmm. so it looks like yeah. the muzzle that's kind of what it looks like, but with a nose and then whiskers on top of it, too. Mm. Is this, so it's more uh, cartoony. Is this in a location appropriate to, to show or not? Yeah. You should totally tweet out a picture of it. I will tweet out a picture. Okay. Tweet it. What'd that Tweet the cat. Was, it, was this one of, like, just a spontaneous thing? Um. Well, I knew, like, when we had to put my cat down, I was going to get a tattoo. Um, but then it, I, well, it was funny because I had been thinking about it for a while, whether I was going to get a paw print or the nose and the paw print seemed like cliche. Uh -huh. And so I wanted to go for the nose and then the tattoo artist I went to, she drew it out once and then she came out and she's like, is this what you want? And I was like, not at all. So I made her <laughs> redraw it like four times and she was like, you're really picky. People don't well, yeah. ask you to redraw it. Like, this is permanent on my body, and no. Well, that's how you end up with those incredible spelling mistakes. Yeah. yeah. If, if that well, happened to me, yeah. I think I would just carve that chunk of skin off. Like, yeah, let's start over. Oh, yeah. All right. So what did it cost you? I was you? bitten by a shark or something. Was it was it expensive? Because isn't tattooing not really cheap? Um, It was $90. Is that American dollars or Canadian dollars? It's Canadian almost the dollars. same. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would ever get a tattoo, to be honest. I like I would want to, but it would have to be something that's really meaningful to me. I you would know, get another one. Maybe, maybe when I go fully bald, I'm just gonna shave down to the down to the skin, and I'm gonna be one of those guys that goes all out, and I'm gonna get. Like a Mega, Mega Man, Man helmet? helmet tattooed <laughs> all over me. How did I know? How did I know? I feel like the head would hurt. Like your head would hurt. I think. I'm surprised there you just don't get. You just shave your head and just wear that Mega Man helmet. Just go make a Mega Man helmet and wear it all the time. That's little, true. That's too hot though. I live in the desert. Man, you put. It's a Mega Man hat. You got the cooling fans in there, man. 
Yeah, I suppose. There's one of our listeners who's been sending me some pretty sweet Mega Man stuff, uh, just in terms of like products to buy. And the next thing they're going to buy when it comes out, they've got this this Mega Man pillow of his arm cannon. And it's, oh, yeah, I've seen that. And you can you put your arm it. in it and sleep on it. I want it. That is so cool. And then there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, I, I don't know if it's attached or not, but it's his helmet that you can slide your head into and tuck your arm into the pillow and totally, it's like $60 for a pillow and I have no qualms about paying that. Not I would love Mega that Man arm pillow. Because yeah. everyone <laughs> sleeps like that. Yeah. Right. And then you can wear it outside. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Speaking of tattoos, so. I heard today there was a news story about some guy who went and got his eyeballs tattooed. And he was upset because for the next two days he was crying ink. Blech. Like this Durr. moron this goes in and I don't think they use the actual needle, but like they inject ink into your eye eyeball. What was he doing? Because he has like 90% of his body covered in ink. He's like, oh, what's next? That's Jeez. disgusting. Idiot. That, that would it's, hurt. It's got to oh, it's got to be terrible. Wow. I don't even like putting eye drops in. Was it as painful right. as you thought it would be? Not at all. Not at all. Like, like even when they're going right over the ribs? When they went over, like right over the ribs, like I could feel it vibrating and I kind of made like a funny face, but that was it. Were you drunk? Mm. Was I drunk? Yeah. No. Completely I, sober, no intoxicants. Like I didn't even mm. have a drink the night before. and You I hadn't was, even huffed a marker before you walked in. No, no. I was tempted to take some of my painkillers, but I didn't. <laughs> Man, you, you, you manned it up. I manned up. But I think it's because I'm used to pain. Like I have the chronic pain, so uh. I think I'm kind of a badass, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. Well then, we'll, I'll take you on a bike ride, and then we'll see how bad. <laughs> Don't get on a bike with like him; he'll dump it. <laughs> no. But now I have the tattoo. Pretty every much time I, you get like... to a corner, Aaron's gonna be like, "Jess, get off!" And then I'll meet you on the other side of the corner. <laughs> By the oh, way, oh no, we're gonna take it. She's gonna get down. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> She's gonna, gonna fall. We're gonna crash. Now. Oh my god! So, so did you guys play any uh, games these past two weeks? I played one game this past two weeks. Just one. Just one. Don't That's overdo it, because I would I would hate for you to actually enjoy your free time. This game to play, sir, is like playing four games at a time. It's like chewing glass. <laughs> I know exactly what game you're talking about. We've been we've been playing playing it loosely put that term for the past few shows, but I tell you what, I tell you, okay, here's the deal. Here's what made my experience more enjoyable. We should probably game. say the name of the game. Okay, The Immortal. On any yeah. That I believe Jeff Hardwoods suggested. Is that really that guy's last name? I don't know. That's what it says on Twitter handle. That's the guy that sends me all the Mega Man stuff. But Jeff Hardwoods, <laughs> sir, if I ever meet you, be prepared for a nice kick in the nuts. Cause, sir, that's what you've given me for the past 14 days. <laughs> and I bet you haven't even gotten very far. I, I've not gotten that far. But here's what I did. I uh, was really excited. I, I only got to play a couple times at you know, a little bit of time. And, of course, I was trying to get the controller and keyboard to work properly. Um, You're still using a keyboard? Not anymore. Okay. Because now I don't, I'm playing for the Genesis. Wait. There's a Genesis version? Oh, my God. And it is way better than the NES version. No. Huh. Oh, yes. How? Graphically, it's way better. Uh, and, you know, when you go in to kill something, you go and kill the goblins or whatever? Okay. You do a finishing move, and you cut the goblin in half, and there's blood. Oh, I'm looking at the or pictures right now. Or you cut his head off. <laughs> And yes, it is way easier to actually find and see where you're going in, in the game. Why? It's not just like playing. It looks like you're actually, yeah, it looks like you're actually in a dungeon instead of just yes. a level that's covered in, in blue pillows. Right. That looks so cool. I'm going to have to get the Genesis version instead. Yeah, totally made the game easy and like more fun to play. Is it? And is it identical, though? Like, 
it's pretty much identical. I there was a couple things like there's a level like the the layout is different where the bodies and the chests are and stuff. Uh huh. But uh, it, it it's really funny because both me and you played this game and got to a point where we didn't know where to go. Like there's just a big hole in the ground eventually. Well, they do a really crappy job of setting up the storyline in this game. I, mean, I don't know when this game came out, but I'm assuming this 92, was... 92, I think. This was really early on in the yeah. dungeon crawling genre. So storyline was kind of taking a backseat to kicking you in the nuts. And yeah. you're this old wizard, and you have to find another old wizard at the bottom of this dungeon. And right, you have to find. Like, I can't. I never remember your name. I know Dunrick is the guy. Who yeah, the, the key to you. They give you no it. clues about how to do so. And this game, I I love Demon Souls and Dark Souls and and Mega Man and games that are super hard. And this game is rock hard. It's kind of stupid. It's, rock, it's not it's rock hard. Stupid. No, it's it it's tough. Okay, now, Eric, did you get did, that, did you finally get through that spot where you shine the amulet into the light? I did. After you navigate through the rooms where there's just random pitfalls, and right. I on purpose went back into that room a few times where you just the floor falls out because he kind of yeah. puts a staff over there, and it's like maybe I can get back up. So I tried a bunch of different That's combinations. That's the worst. Yeah. And you can't. They dangle yeah, you on that thread, and then they cut it without they giving you. I was off. like, you mashing can't, buttons. I don't everything. think there's a way to get back up. Right. I don't. And then in the Sega version, there's a room that has a lot of those little spitfalls and stuff. Uh huh. But then, um, you know that shade, that little like shade that flies around, you can only see the shadow of. Yes. Uh, but you couldn't there's really a whole see room it. in there that's completely dark, so you can't see this freaking thing. And you're trying to walk across. You're trying to. You know, you finally get the pad, and so you don't fall in the holes. And you pick up the like a jade or something like that. And there's a treasure chest. You finally get to bring that out. But then randomly, that stupid ass shade or whatever comes up and just attacks you and there is no way to defend yourself you're just dead it just attacks you three times and you're dead yep i beat it dodge attack somehow you beat that shade i beat the shade that's in the room just before you get to the the area that has the kind of that big pitfall in the bottom right yeah Yeah. and then i had no health left and then i died the next time but but the shade and and you played the, the 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 nes version right yeah yeah so the in that one the room you can see it flying because you can see the shadow on the ground Mm -hmm. i have no idea well there's there's two different things there's a shade and then there are bats that fly around okay i i because i know the one bats i don't know on the nes version there's that right when you that first room that you go into like after you leave and talk to the face the floating head Mm -hmm. yeah and you go to the right and the guy says don't come any closer um there's that little like black thing that flies around yeah that's a bat it'll hit you so that's the bat. Okay, so that's that. But then the other room I never got to on the NES version because okay. I kept dying. I kept falling in the pit or getting hit by the, the But arrows. did you guys find the map? There's a map. I did find the map, but it says, hey, this is this room does not make any sense. It's not on the map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but the map, the map is actually the weirdest map ever because when you look at it, it's the map. Like, you don't open it up. Yeah, so it's you just have right to, there like, in front of you so you can yeah. see where you're at. So for but, the... Shade room, it shows up. Okay, see, I didn't. Uh, I tried it in there, and it, it didn't let me. So, like I said, I think the games are a little bit different between the NES and the, and the Sega. Well, you, Aaron, you and I both got stuck in that same part when you get through the shade room, you pick up the amulet, and then you get right. to this this room where they don't tell you what to do. I mean, this game is really sparse on what to do, where no. to go. Yeah, and nothing. You walk in and there's a bunch of fireballs shooting around and there's arrows flying across and it's generally a one hit kill from those things. So you gotta yep. be really careful. And you walk you walk down and it looks like you can get around but you can't fit and then off on the right there's something that looks like a rope attached to the wall. So I'm over there trying to swing at it and, and light it on fire or do something with it and, and and that's the difference between the NES and the Sega. There's actually another I had to go to another room to get to that part where that light was and it's on the right side of the wall oh not on the not on the left yeah and i couldn't room. i gave up there and that's when you called me and you're like hey this is what you got to do at this point and it was it's it's funny because that game this game is it it's so hard that even just choosing the wrong menu option will completely kill you and end the game so they give right. you this like amulet reading? what's that yeah reading the amulet yeah you read the amulet yeah. and you die do you want to read the runes yeah. Yes, uh, I guess so, yeah. No, you're dead. I'm sorry. Game over. Would I was like so mad. Over? Well, I got down to a further part, and I picked up some bait. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm going to throw this bait on the ground oh, and see what happens. Oh, the bait just brings the guy up from the ground and eats you? Yeah, the big worm comes up and eats you. 
It's like, hey, screw you. You're dead. Yeah. I didn't then, use uh, the bait. The bottle will heal you. That gives you health at least. I didn't drink it because I was I afraid it was going to be poison. Yeah, that gives you that gives you stuff. No, that gives you health. But then as you get further down, then, well, then there's actually like a little town or something. There's people down. There. There's like a miner who's mining. He goes, you can't have my gems. I'm sorry. Get away from me. I was going to say, yeah, when you open dirt. up, when you use that amulet, it opens up the staircase. Like, all right, cool. I got this far. And then I walk over to the staircase and I fall down the pit and die because I didn't actually walk over to the stairs and so the lower stair myself side, down. Yeah, you just went to the other side and fell. And then you get to the it, you get down to that next room and they give you your, your certificate which is just a passcode. Right. And then exactly. they introduce that new slime enemy that hits you and you instantly yeah. die. Instantly Fuck die. Them. You just get covered in slime. And the cool thing about the Genesis one it turned I didn't see I didn't do an NES one on that yet. But it, you just turned a skeleton a skeleton on the ground. <laughs> oh really? It you in green and yeah, it did that. This this yeah. one um you can walk down and you can search through the bones that are on the floor. And it's like, hey, I got this sweet elven sword, which is going to give me more agility in battle. And it says, you can search this item further. And then I'm like, all right, sure, I'll search it further. Oh, hey, you're dead. Yeah. yeah. Son of a bitch. And I, I never got, I didn't so get that. Paranoid. that. But did you guys come across the merchant? Um, Yeah, no. but you needed, you needed 100. Gold. This one. I, I needed 80 for the boot, the boot, the boots of slime so you don't get killed by the slime guys. You the need, the uh, NES one says you need a hundred. Oh yeah, the Sega one need eighty, and I had to. I haven't figured out how to sell. Like I literally had played it, and I played it so many times because you you literally die all the time, and you have to start over. And I, I don't know how anybody could play this game and keep their sanity without save state. Yeah, well, uh, I think in all honesty, this game is, for all intents and purposes, a very good early representation of what demon souls was turned out to be because right. this game is so brutally unforgiving that hey guess what you're dead you screwed you just lost all your progress and demon souls albeit a little bit more complex is kind of the same concept of hey you got ten thousand souls you're walking around oh you're dead you just lost all that progress right and yeah it's uh yeah it's a tough one you know and i finally just gave up because you, you go in those rooms and there's the pits and then or the where my merchant was, if you went up any further, the uh, there's a charm spell that I picked up, uh, but there's like a will-o'-wisp that just comes and attacks you. Doesn't the charm spell kill you too? Uh, it didn't kill me when I used it. Because I think I used the charm spell, and it's like, oh, there's a blinding flash, and you're dead. Or was yeah, that the didn't, amulet? It didn't happen to me, no. But I honestly became so paranoid during that game. Like, anything that I picked up, I didn't use. Like, yeah. Did you did, did you get dare. down to the second level, Jess? Second level, and then I got attacked by the green stuff, and then after there's like orby stuff that follows you. Yeah, you got to go into that room, and the guy says you're going to need these slime boots to continue. But then you needed a hundred gold, and I only had ninety, and couldn't figure out where to get the extra ten gold. And I sure as hell wasn't about to go back up. Did you pick up? Did you pick up the emerald and the ruby? Yes. I think you no. can sell them to that guy. Maybe. Well, there's I, I guess that in, I didn't get in that room where the, the, the merchant is, there's a, a piece of granite. But what pissed me off is you can walk in there and pick it up, but then those fire orbs will follow you from room to room until you're dead. Right. But I think you can use them to, the, you can charm them with that charm spell, those will-o'-wisps. That would have been nice to know. But then I, I just ran through, and then I started fighting the guys on the other side and got killed. And Right, and I ran in to fight this minotaur, and I killed the minotaur. And then I walked into a room, and or then I got to a point, those stupid green slimes, no matter where I walked when I, when I tried to like start over, I couldn't move anywhere because they were like Pac-Man ghosting me and keeping me in the corner. So I couldn't move anywhere except without them getting me. How did and you I panic, too. Oh, yeah. Aaron, how did you find out there was a Genesis version of this? Uh, just... This is a good... Uh, uh, one of my old uh, person I used to work with, um, Luke Lefebvre, I was talking to him because he's a huge huge retro gaming fan right and i was talking about the show and everything and he's like yeah we're playing the immortal and he immediately says oh you don't want to play the ns word get the genesis version the genesis version is way better i mean the graphically it's a uh, graphically way way better it's actually got color and it's pretty then when you actually go into the fight scenes because he knew this game to the core he told me everything about this game pretty much which got me excited about it again was uh, you go in there and you, you get in the fight scene and you can dodge and duck right and then you stab the guy up and then at the very end when you kill him you do this finishing move you cut the guy in half and there's blood or you cut his head off yeah man you're gonna did you, it, but it's hard did you finally figure out the battle system and how to how to do the dodges yes because if he's if he's swinging from the right you can hit 
or if he's if he's swinging from screen left, you can hit right and then uh, A and you'll dodge to the right. And then if he's swinging right. from the screen right, you can hit left and and A and dodge right. left. And, and, and one thing that I I've, I've learned if I get my timing right is if I can attack him at the right time, I can just continue it to attacking him. He doesn't ever have a chance to attack you back. Yeah, I usually yeah just I found walk that in. my best defense was a strong offense. Just walk in and start hammering the buttons. Just swing just, away. Just try to get it away, man. And the thing is, like, the, the buttons and there's no tutorial. The Genesis had the three buttons and then also had these two upper buttons, apparently, I had a set. Um, and so, like, I was using my 360 controller and I had to lay it out so I'd forget which button did, you know, which one was it. I did A, B, and C, I think it was. You know, from left to right. So it'd be easy to remember, but at the same time, I couldn't remember which button did what in the fight system. Huh. I just hit him until I saw the, the sword go, and then I would keep using that one. Are you but, planning on trying to finish this? I am, yeah. I like I, it. I really, want, I really want to get through it more. Um, I, actually, I, I actually want to find a physical copy of this because, like you were saying, that um, save states are your friend in this game. But mm-hmm. I kind of feel like... When I'm playing these games, even though I have that option avail- available to me, I'm really trying hard not to use that simply because well, I want to enjoy these games the way they were meant to be played. It's And it's only useful and good to you if you remember to save state. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so pretty much I would remember when I'd get to a major point, and I was pretty much only save stating at one point because that's all I really could do after I got my certificate, which is kind of silly. but Huh. Yeah. Like <laughs> I suppose save state I, after I got to a big room rather than getting to one room and say, oh, I made it, and then, you know, yeah. save state and going on. I, I suppose you could treat the save states kind of as a way to just, you know, like when you're playing through Mega Man, it's just the only thing I can think of right now is you get to the end and they give you the code for here's here's your, your code to get back to exactly here so you have all the same bosses mm-hmm. beat. You could just save state at something like that. And I think you'd be fine. I th- to me, I think that's a fair trade. Rather than just writing it down, it just saves you a couple extra steps than having to keep a notebook and type them back in. Right. But if- and the codes are different too, by the way. Are they? Yeah, there's actually a different code um, for like. Okay, so the first time I got down there, it gave me a gave me a certificate, and then I died, and I, I think I just reset it. I came back to the game and played later, and I started up. Uh, I had to go from the beginning, and I made my way down. Or no, I didn't save state when I got down there. So then I reloaded it, went back down the thing where it gives me the code, and they added two two numbers on the end of it. Huh. So pretty much everything was the same, but they added like a seven zero at the end of the code. Huh. I wonder so if I'm you not... could give me your code and if it would work on on mine. Uh, maybe I could give it to you. Maybe everybody listening, you can get this code. It'll get to that bottom room. <laughs> if I can figure out where the hell I wrote my code down on. I think I would play it again, and I think it would be fun if you kept it as something that's fun. Yeah. But like, if game... you looked at it as, yeah. I'm going to die every five seconds, so might as well enjoy it. I think this would be a fantastic right. game to play with somebody, and then do the old trade-off the control. Like, hey, when you die, it's my turn, and then like, try to plow right. through this together. That would definitely be good, yeah. because, yeah, you just uh, you learn. All right, here's the code I got. You ready for this? Is this the Genesis version? This is the Genesis version. Okay. It is... Uh... A A nine E five one zero 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 six F seven zero. That's pretty much the, the same seven, layout six. as the NES versions. The code that I got to get down there is six Y nine Y V one zero 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 six V nine zero. So if you want to skip the first opening part be my guest but i'm uh, tomorrow i'm going to go to the retro store and i'm going to actually look for a copy of this game because i i want to actually experience it it, the way it's meant to be played go for it and then uh yeah get the look up that try try the sega genesis version um you're going to see a world of difference man well it's a it's the next generation it'd be you know back then it'd be like the difference between ps1 and ps2 so i suppose i'm surprised they didn't do a super nintendo version of this I'm surprised they haven't made, and it's made by Electronics Arts for the for the. Uh, I don't know who made the first one for the NES, but this one was made by Electronic Arts huh. for the Genesis. I'll have to look into yeah. it. I know Genesis games are kind of hard to come by. Yeah. 
Uh, no, really, really good. That's been from the last time to do uh, that. And then the next, the next week or two, I'm going to be uh, crazy busy at work. So I'm not sure how much uh, I'll be able to get in game wise here. We'll fit you in. Jess, did you play anything this week? Um, Pokemon Emerald. Oh no! Jeez. Why did you start playing Pokemon Emerald? Um. Because someone recommended it to me on Twitter. Who's this someone? So we can. I'm ban looking him. at now. They said that it was the best Pokemon game ever. I will agree that when I worked at GameStop, that was clearly the uh, the favorite one. Um, but it was I don't know. It was crazy because there were so many. It was Zach who is Will Whaler Don Skitty. I think is Whaler this Whaler Dong Whaler Dawn. Oh, I thought he's Whaler no G. Dong. Oh, no. Um, but I don't. It was so. It made me feel so old. Why? This is on Game Boy Advance, right? Yeah. Why? Um, it... because I did not know any of the Pokemon. Like these are the original were... Pokemon, though. No, they weren't. Aren't they? No, I think they're second generation. Really? So I don't know there were the some I'm that about. remained. Like I think I saw like Geodude and a Mac Chop. My knowledge no. of Pokemon <laughs> extends to the period that I got home from doing my paper route until I had to go to school twenty five minutes later, and I watched the cartoon. See, and this is the thing: like all new characters, like it's not Professor Oak, it's Professor Birch. And Gary's not there. The guy who's like your new Gary is totally nice to you. What is this? Where the... I don't know. It made me feel old. Hmm. But it was fun. I liked it. I felt like I had no idea who any of these Pokemon were at all because I didn't. Is it um, Is it basically the same as, as Pokemon Yellow just with different Pokemon and better graphics? Yeah. Because that's how I've envisioned the entire Pokemon series, and I think that right there is why I have stayed away from it, is because it's, yeah, it's probably a fantastic game, but I kind of equate it to Madden football. Hey, you know what? It's the exact same game. A little bit better graphics. And see, when I was playing it, I was like, yeah, I can really see where the criticism was from Yellow, from when you didn't like Yellow. Because those are the characters that, like, I watched the show, I played the games, I played the card games. So, like, I love those Pokemon. Yeah. And when I get to Emerald, I'm like, who the hell are these? Like, you have no connection. I don't know who they are. Well, didn't they, did they ever expand the comic, or not the comic, the cartoon to incorporate the the later generations? I don't know. Possibly. But, uh, I'm not sure. Hmm. Sorry. How, How much of it did you actually play? Um, I beat the first gym and then I was just moving on team Aqua. They don't even have team rocket. And that I was disappointed in that because team rocket is like the biggest badass as ever. They probably have tattoos as well. I don't (laughs) know if they're badasses. They're kind of flamboyant. (laughs) But uh, there's Team Aqua now, so I someone robbed someone, and I have to go do something. I don't know. Didn't Aqua sing Barbie Girl? Aqua did sing sing, bar, bleh, sing Barbie Girl. Kind of ashamed I know that. Psh, it's the best song ever. Psh, I'm a Barbie girl living in a Barbie world. Sing it, Aaron. Hey, I don't remember. <laughs> hey, but guess what I just found out about Team I was Barbie. waiting. What? I just found out. You talk to the merchant, and then you walk away, and you go back to talk to the merchant, and he goes, all right, fine, 60 gold then. Jerk? <gasps> that that, asshole, so that asshole had me walking around looking for 10 more gold. <laughs> I hate that That's game. Right. <laughs> and I don't know what the... That this does when you pick up these gems and stuff. Sorry, I, I had to play it. It was, it was exciting. I'm looking at pictures of the Genesis combat system, and there's this one. You got to look at this picture where at the I, I can see what you mean at the end of the combat system. The guy's head is just literally exploding like a bomb went off in it. I want to wow. play the Genesis version. 
the Genesis One man is so like graphically superior than the NES. Not one. Not to go too far back into this conversation, but do either of you know what those two bars are for in the combat system? Clearly, one of them is the health bar, but what's the other one? The red one? No, I no idea. No. That little like I've never figured it out. Apparently, it goes up though as you do more damage. I think is that like your combo meter? Maybe. <laughs> I don't. I have no idea. That game's good offense. That game's so friggin' dumb. I love yeah. it. Um, that's all you played this week, Aaron. It's all. Well, yeah, that's all I played. Nick Stevens is going to be kind of mad because uh, I should probably drop this now. We have a new Facebook page because I was kind of thinking that not everybody's on Twitter. But what's the what's the current number of people on Facebook? It's like. A tenth of the population of the world is on Facebook. It's just some astronomical number. I thought you meant on our page. I was like, no, probably a little bit smaller than that. It's (laughs) twenty-two at this moment, but we just made it uh, last night. So um, we're going to start pushing out the shows on Facebook updates. Uh, We'll have polls and just random stuff, you know, random thoughts from from us. But uh, Nick Stevens says that he. He likes the episode where Aaron surprises, or the segment where Aaron surprises us with a random game. So, the segment where I surprise him with a random game. Yeah, you every show you just pop in and you're like, I played this too. Oh, my big surprise this time was I played the Genesis version. That son of a bitch killed me. God fucking hate this. (laughs) You can find us on Facebook at uh, (laughs) facebook.com/slash Factory Sealed. So, if you don't have Twitter, you don't need to sign up to follow us, but. You can find us there. I, this is going to be the first, I think this is the first episode I'm actually going to talk about this. Bullshit. I I played some more Mega Man. I play a ton of Mega Man as it is, but I actually went back and I I wanted to replay one of my least favorite in the series, which is Mega Man 4. And I don't know why. I don't really care too much for Mega Man 4. Maybe it's the, the bosses in there just are kind of dumb. The only boss that really sticks out to me every time is Pharaoh Man. And as a kid, I thought that was really cool because I went through this phase where I was really into Egyptians and pharaohs and stuff. I'm like, all right, go Pharaoh Man. You but, would. But the rest of that game is uh, kind of dumb. You know, you got Bright Man and, and Ring Man, who I was expecting to be like this big glitzed out guy with wearing a bunch of jewelry, but apparently he's the planet Saturn. And there's dust man which is like a big upside down vacuum cleaner um skull man and it's just it's it's kind of dumb i mean i i know i'm talking about mega man where they're they have stupid robots but like mega man 4 is is dumb um hmm. the gameplay is fantastic don't get me wrong but like the bosses are not my favorite so anyway um i went back and played it and i forgot that mega man 4 is the first game in the series that actually delves into the history of of Mega Man and and how all of these events came to be and it was something that I probably should know but I, I maybe I've just forgotten it over time but um if you just if you load it up and let the game go through the opening credits and then they kind of give you this backstory of like in 2000X um household robots rock and roll uh created by Dr. Light um just whatever mind in their own business when the industrial robots um, had an uprising and took over the world and, and rock said, I'm going to be converted into a super robot. And I completely forgot about that. Maybe it's just my, my excitement over Mega Man as a kid. I'm just like, all right, it's in press start. Let's go. Let's kill things. And uh, I never understood why in in Japan it's called Rockman but apparently that's that's what he is he's rock and he turned into a robot personally i think rockman's a stupid name so um i got into an argument with a guy in canada i think i talked about that one of the the store owners I'm like yeah it's sweet mega man poster like, it's rockman like, first of all shut up second of all it's mega man have any of you played Mega Man 4, or am I just talking to a wall here? I I haven't played Mega Man 4 since I was probably 12 years old. <sighs> I got yeah. to get you guys on the Mega Man train. 
I we like should Mega do Man a Mega Man just, episode soon. They're just hard. hard. Okay, well, well. Um, this is so hard. I think I, I think I put on the Facebook page that I was actually playing Mega Man for, and Nick Stevens wrote in, and he said he's uh he he's keeping it short and sweet this week. He wants to know who our favorite Mega Man boss is, since we're talking about Mega Man. Uh, his favorite is Metal Man and Mega Man 2. Best music, best power-up. Easy to beat without power-ups. I always beat him first and then move on to Woodman. Have a nice day, Nick. Hmm. If you want to write in a question, I guess this is as good a time as I need to transition into that. Um, Factory Sealed at Manatank.com or you can leave your questions on our Facebook page. Sound, sound fair enough? That sounds fair. Okay. I suppose we should... Let's just make this an official... Do you guys have any other games you want to talk about or not? I do. Oh. I do have a game that I would like to bring up. <laughs> We're so out, segment of the show. We are so out of season right now that I just started to jump ahead. And, let's go back. It's going to be painful. There, There's a game that I'd like to talk about that uh, I did... Uh, I remember playing recently, and uh, I want to see if you guys have heard about it. And that is... I believe it is called... Maniac Mansion for the NES. Yes. And it was like the uh, uh, kind of like House on the anybody play Betrayal House on the Hill is like a tabletop game. The what? It, it's called uh, well the game is called Betrayal House on House on the Hill. No. It's like a okay, anyway it's a, it's a game where you adventure in and you open up rooms of the house and then there's like uh, things will happen if you come across things and things like that. Uh, this game apparently is that way too. You, know, you go in this house and you're, you're you, you get trapped. But uh, I remember the game was being a, was a pain in the butt. So I was just curious if you've ever played that or heard about it. I've played it or has a long feedback. time ago, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that this game will not hold up well over time. See, it's, it's, it's a Lucasfilm game, if I remember properly. Yeah, Andrew and I were having a conversation about this game the other day, actually, which is so bizarre. Really? Because he loved wow. it. Really? Okay. Yeah, like we actually like pulled it up and we're talking about it. Isn't this one of those? Isn't this a game kind of like you see those those mystery dinner theaters where you go to this haunted ha- yeah. haunted mansion and and somebody dies and then you have to figure it out? I think so. I don't remember. I don't remember it. He was like all for this game. Huh? Did you? So you played this recently, Aaron? Yeah, I played it. Uh, I don't know. Probably was six, six months ago or so before we started the show. Oh, so I, recently uh, is a relative term. Really, it's a relative <laughs> term. I'm, okay. pl- I'm actually playing it right now. With you. <laughs> How many? You just um, play games throughout the whole show, don't you? Oh, uh, you know, I take this time out to do that. You know, I suppose that's <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> but I just remember it was one of those weirdly rat- wacky games. But it's also one of those ones where you have like the get the options, you know, like uh-huh. push open to get in or pull close, use turn, you know, things like is that. This... So there's different things you would choose, kind of text-based. Is this a Super Nintendo? Too. It's an NES, actually, yeah. Huh. For for Super Nintendo, I think we should play Zombies Ate My Neighbor. I love that game. Yeah, that's on the docket for next for show. That. Zombies. Which is which happens also happens to be a LucasArts game. Poor LucasArts. Well Arts. As Mansion. I know. <laughs> But on the upshot, oh. Disney's announced that they're going to do a brand new Star Wars film every summer for the foreseeable future starting next year. See, I don't know if that's good news. Uh, <laughs> all right, here, here's, here's the thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this up, guys. You, you need to go. Zombie. Gotta figure out. Oh, go ahead. I was just reading what uh, I wrote, and I wrote, Zombies ate my zombies. <laughs> zombies ate my zombies. I hate it when my zombies eat my zombies. Damn, oh, damn it. I keep having to pull them up. Let's see. <laughs> Here we go. Gross. What are you talking about? Oh, you guys are sick. All right, guys. This is a, this is a long one here. What are you What are you reading? Is this an email? <laughs> Where are you going? No. Yeah, this is. Yeah, it's on the email. But you need. I'm gonna I'm gonna type this into the the Skype here. What are you? And I'm gonna somehow get it on the Facebook page. What? But everybody needs to watch this. Okay, this is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> you guys are gonna keep talking. I'm gonna type. What are you? <laughs> Are you typing a hyperlink? Because you can copy and paste hyperlinks. I can't do it from my phone. You are typing out a hyperlink? Why don't you do it 
on the Skype call on the computer that's directly like in front of you. Nineteen ninety six. Because I have to, oh, I have to give them my email. Oh my god! Oh my I'm on my god. phone doing it. I pulled it up on my phone because that's where I had the file. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from me? I'm, yeah, I'm, we're I'm computer retro, illiterate. Uh... I grew up in the nineties. Speaking of retro, I spent the past week at work. They've got this huge building where all of this really old technology and computers and stuff from from years long past have been sitting for decades. I had to sift through all that crap and, and inventory it and stack it up. And, like, it's just this huge wall of old Compaq and, and old Dell computers from the mid-90s. It's just so hilarious. old crap. Do you uh, watch Archer? Archer? No. Oh, you need to watch Archer. Why? Because it's, like, Sell this me whole... on it. It's a cartoon, but it's, like, 60s-esque but still relevant to our time frame. Like they talk a lot about like Cold War and everything like that. But the filing cabinets they have are totally the same filing cabinets that my doctor has in his office. <laughs> you sound like you need to so, get a new doctor. I took a picture of them. <laughs> okay, so I can't watch this right now, but we'll have to watch okay, that. You need later. to watch it. Uh, basically, if anybody if anybody wants to is watching the show and wants to watch this next. Just go to iwatchstuff.com. Oh, I saw this. Is this one that you saw on Patton Oswald from the Parking Yeah, it was on Reddit. Yeah. It's, it's it's pretty fantastic. It's the best thing ever. Yeah. You I'll need to, to watch it. I'll have to watch that. You have to watch it. Yeah. So, since we started emails and stopped and went back, it sparked my memory. <laughs> I did play another really, really retro game this past week. Um uh, I've started to I got really hooked on Steam for a while when they had all their Steam sales and then I started keeping a closer eye on on gog.com and they had a Dungeons and Dragons Dino Dino sale Dynamo Dynamite something explosion sale where they had <laughs> 10 Dungeons and Dragons games for $21. It was the original Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 2, uh Neverwinter Nights 1 complete, number 2 complete and then a like six other incredible games. So I was a huge Baldur's Gate fan. Like Baldur's Gate is what got me into the dungeon crawling series. And uh, I played that. I was surprised I had a computer powerful enough to play that back in the day. But I single-handedly credit Baldur's Gate for getting me into computers because I had hundreds of hours into that game. And back then you had to save your game on a floppy drive. And I still have the original floppy drive in my desk drawer that it's it's a green floppy disk and it says Baldur's Gate game save files and and um I was saving them on on the on the uh, hard drive on the computer and my stepmom at the time thought she'd be all helpful and go through and clean out the computer and <gasps> and deleted my game saves and I was I oh, came man. home and it was a weekend and I was really excited all my friends were out of town and and I'm like I'm going to play some Baldur's Gate tonight and I'm like I'm going to settle in for a long time and I go to load it up and there's no option to load it's all gone so I spent the entire weekend trying to figure out how to get my game save back. And it, it 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 consisted of just digging through the computer files to try to reconstruct this game save file. And I was able to do it. And uh, that's when I transferred it onto that floppy disk. And like I think I've just kept that stupid floppy disk as a as a as a victory <laughs> trophy. But um they released the Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition not too long ago for PC and an iPad. And I didn't want to get it because I didn't want it. I didn't. I didn't think they would do a good enough job to kind of. I think it would have destroyed my memories of the original game, basically. So I load this thing up, and I've got my computer hooked up to my TV, and load the th- load the game up, and I'm like, fuck, this game looks terrible. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 really the graphics on that game are really bad. But it's. It's so hard to describe how they are because it's almost like pseudo three D models that are are. It's it's fake 3D on there, and it looks good. It's 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 uh, typical Baldur's Gate, but right. um, in terms of dungeon crawling games that I've played, like Diablo, 
the control scheme in this game is is garbage. It does not hold up well. You, you most of those games when you click like the the screen stays centered on your character. Not in this one. You click, he'll walk to the end of the screen. Then if you want to keep moving, you have to move your mouse over and then click again, and then he'll walk to the, end of the screen. You gotta move over and click and and uh, it was just it was a good trip back in time. But I don't think that I'll invest the, the hundreds of hours into this game because that game alone takes like 15 to 20 hours just to get into the the good parts of it the the beginning aspect of it is is so tedious and and building your party and grinding levels and getting backstory and it's it's still a good story so much of that game is voice acted and even by today's standards the voice acting is stellar did either of you play that game back in its day no I played Baldur's Gate back in the day, yeah. The PC one? Mm-hmm. I was trying... I, I, wanna, still, I actually still own it. It's right here in my drawer. I want to find somebody to see... Somebody else who has it to see if the online capability still works. I have it. If you want to try it. We should give that a go. Because I know you can just directly connect via IP, which is how we used mm-hmm. to do it back in the old day before we had lobbies. Right. So I never got to do that back in the day. You're talking about the original Baldur's Gate, right? Yep. Baldur's Gate 1. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got all my discs right here in this drawer. So, Jeez. I don't know what happened to all of mine. That's yeah, it was like an eight disc or. I tried. I tried playing some Neverwinter Nights with Kevin, but we got so fed up with the crappiness of the multiplayer that we just said screw it. So, um, yeah. I never got too much into Neverwinter. I was, I was much more. Neverwinter was really good as a single player game. I don't know how people play it online, but it's got a huge Ooh. online following. Still, it does. There's still people yeah. that play that. My brother in law it's all he plays is that online. And Jeez. You know, they create their own races, and they get the people that do that. I tried doing uh, doing the uh, the create your own like adventure, like dungeon type thing on there. Yeah. That thing's a pain in the butt for to me anyway. For somebody else who knows what they're doing, they could probably do it in no time. You have to do a really good time at it, but yeah, that thought was really neat. All right, do you guys want to do some emails? We should do some more emails okay. again. <laughs> Actually, let me rephrase that. Take two. Do you want to go back to emails? We have a lot of emails, man. We do. We're going to have to wait on Ryan, failed. though, because we, yeah. we did not play that chapter. I was, I, I was getting kind of kind of down because we had a slump in emails for a while. So if you want to write an email, game suggestion, whatever, a love note, uh, factorysealed at manatank.com. Aww, you can romantic. send us pictures of your, your, your tattoos, tattoos <laughs> wherever they may be. Um, Let's go back to this one by Nick Stevens. He wants to know what our favorite Mega Man boss is. I want to address his first. I feel like right. too many people choose Metal Man. And Metal Man, his weapon is easily one of the most overpowered weapons in all of video gaming. Easily. Because you can get Metal Man at the beginning of the game. He's the easiest boss to beat. And he gives you the most powerful weapon. And you can just use that on every boss with the exception of a couple for the rest of the game and be perfectly fine. I mean, he's a cool boss, cool, great level, but I would not say that he's the best Mega Man boss. I would, I don't know. There's so many to choose from. I'm really partial to air man just cause I like, he's like, he's just built out of airplane parts. I think that's, that's pretty cool. And his, his level is tough. You've got those big floating heads with the, uh, the, the the drills that come out of the top and they, they appear just as you're about to jump and it kills you all the time. I, I'm i going to go with Air Man. At least for now until I think of someone better. I think... Oh, man. It's a, it's a tough one. Um, it's got to, Mine's got to be from Mega Man 2, though, simply because that's my favorite. I don't know. Maybe... Uh... A toss up, maybe. I think between Guts Man and Guts Man's cool. Hard Man. Hard Man and Guts Man are both from Mega Man One, aren't they? Hard Man's in Mega Man Three. Oh yeah, he's the guy that looks like a garbage can. Mm-hmm. I think Bubble. I just like I just like their name. I also like Junk Man. He's from Mega Man Six. <laughs> <laughs> Junk Man. I, I like I like the unique names that are like they got a they started to stretch a little bit when they got into the new ones, um, with like Sheep Man and there was a Strike Man and he was a baseball, like really, 
the uh oh god what's the guy's name was there a napalm man the guy that yeah had, napalm like, man he was yeah, cool there's... i like napalm man there's so many cool bosses there's the the one guy that i thought would have been a lot cooler but he really wasn't was um the guy that was like a medieval knight i don't know if his name was just nightman uh i think it is nightman yeah it's nightman i thought he would have been a lot cooler but what about yamato man he was the uh, yeah. He was the Japanese warrior, wasn't he? Yeah. They had the the tomahawk guy too. Um, no, I'm gonna go with with Airman, Airman or Napalm Man easily. I think the worst one yeah. has to be Flash Man. Flash Man. Because his power does absolutely nothing. There is <laughs> there's nothing there's nobody that it damages there's nobody that's weak to it all it does is just freeze everything on the screen and that's it for like mm. a fraction of a second it's the most worthless power that's from Mega Man Seven Freeze Man no Flash oh, Man Flash is Man Mega Man Two Mega Man Two sorry they're right by each other yeah in alphabetical <laughs> order Jess do you have a favorite Mega Man boss I honestly cannot remember. I, I didn't play a huge amount, and my memory is crap. I used to really like Cut Man from Mega Man 1 until I realized how who? shitty Mega Man 1 really kind of was. Who, who's the guy who has the uh, like the, the saw blades that shoot? That's Metal Man. That Metal Man? Yeah. yeah. That's the most memorable one that I have because that's the guy I initially thought of. I was but... digging through, when I was moving, I was digging through a lot of my old games, and I actually found a Game Boy cartridge of Mega Man 2 that I had, and it only has... It only has four of the bosses. It has Metal Man, Wood Man, and I can't remember the other two that are on there. But for a portable game, it's it's spot on copy of the NES game, just black and white. Huh. That's cool. All right, let's see. We've got an email here from Christopher Elford. It says, Hello, Factory Seal crew. I hope that everyone had an amazing week and played some amazing games. I have a few questions for the group that I thought were quite interesting. When it comes to buying retro games to play, what would be an ideal place to buy them? I personally think that Amazon works because you can most likely find the games there for a reasonable price. Paid ten thirty three, including shipping for Power Rangers Light Speed Rescue. About ten dollars too much, sir. That is t- t- ten dollars <laughs> and thirty three cents more than you should have, and I think it was worth the price. It came with the game, works fine as if new, the original jewel case and manual. By now, you should all know that I'm a major fan of the Power Rangers. Okay, I'll forgive you for that. Also, bought a new sealed copy of Shadow of the Classes from Five Below, only five dollars. Uh, second, okay, let's address That's that one. Price on that. We've we've talked about this a little bit before, but. Um, I'm I'm more into actually hunting for the physical copy of it. Anybody can go online and order something that doesn't take any any patience or skill. I, I mean, not that retro game hunting really is a skill, but uh, price. You're a little bit more pretentious than that. I like to see and hold it, and then and then actually know what I'm getting because I got burned a few times before, and people would have a picture up and like this is what it looks like, and then I get it, and it looks nothing like that. So. You know, at, at what point are you going to complain about that? And I think the price kind of varies from game to game. I guess a lot of it just comes down to what do you think it's worth? I think yep. that's a big thing. Like, what are you willing to pay for entertainment? Yeah. And it depends. Or are you a just collection or whatever you want, whatever reason you want. Exactly. Are you are you yeah. buying it to have it as a collector collector's item or are you buying it to play it? Because if you're buying it to play it, don't pay much for it. Um, right. If you're buying it to collect it, like a like a Mega Man in box, then you know the going price for that might be over a hundred dollars. And if it, it, to you, if that's worth it, then yeah, that's fair price. But don't expect to hold out for this super steal. Um, you know, I, I I read a news story not too uh, this was it this past week where some lady went to the Goodwill and found a a sealed copy of Stadium Events, which is single handedly the rarest. NES game. Yeah, somebody posted that on was that Facebook or you? Maybe that was you that posted. Yeah, it. rarest NES game in existence. All of them. I think there was only like a few hundred copies, if that, that were ever created, and they were all supposed to have been destroyed. But this one, in its original seal, had survived, and she bought it for seven ninety nine, and it's worth fifteen thousand dollars. That's Jeez. insane. That's crazy. Huh. So I would uh, like that. check check Goodwills. I mean, now it's gotten right. to the point where. 
they have people at Goodwill that now know, hey, I should check this price of this game. Um, back when Ben and I used to go hunting for games, we would go to Goodwill all the time and they'd have stuff there because nobody really knew. It's like, whatever, it's an old crappy NES game. So right. we would get some pretty good See, steals. our stuff in Goodwill is expensive. Really? Like, I don't know. I find, um, like, most things are, like, $10. Oof. Like, even for clothes and stuff, jeans are, like, $8, $10, That's not, $15. Kind of yeah, it's not too bad. But for, like, uh, used jeans? I don't know. I definitely Whatever. think buying sealed copies of games is something you should only do if number one you already have a copy of the game that you can play that way it takes away that temptation to open it and you really 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 want a sealed copy of that game because those mm-hmm. are expensive especially if you're looking for sealed copies of like final fantasy 7 or 8 or any nes game sealed you're looking to pay anywhere from 50 to a few hundred dollars mm-hmm. there's no way i could keep a sealed copy of anything i know that ben has dozens if not hundreds of sealed copies of nes games that's the name of our show and he never makes it on because he's a jerk face all right chris because he's doing so many awesome things <laughs> but yeah uh, my, my opinion on this one by the way is uh if you can it, if, you, if i want a game i'm gonna buy it i don't care where i'm gonna get it but i do like to look for it in a retro gaming store yeah rather than online but if i really want it i'll just get it online and i'm gonna, I'm gonna get it the thing, and I'll try to pay the price that I think it's worth. Yeah, the thing is, is you got to be aware of what it's worth. So go on, use the internet as a tool to figure out how much it's worth, and then go to the store. And if you see it online averaging for fifteen dollars, and in the store they want sixty, buy it online. Then, then buy it online. But if it's if it's five dollars more in the store, pay the five dollars more because you're going to recoup that five dollars easily in time waiting and shipping. And you're supporting like smaller stores usually yeah. they're like mom and pop stores and and by the way a lot of my friends are power rangers fans so that's good and the game probably was worth 1033 but uh, uh i've never been a fan of power rangers games personally yeah but i was never a big fan of power rangers his mm, red ranger well back when maybe the pink ranger was on back in the original when i was like a teenager going through puberty it was fantastic but, uh <laughs> Christopher's second question says, when it comes to buying games, whether retro or new, do you watch or read reviews prior to your purchase? If you do, what are the pros and cons of what you've seen in those reviews? I try not to. And I think for me, it's because I keep up with a game so much to the point that when it comes out, I know everything there is to know about it. And I'm going to make my own judgment based off that. Because when you read a review, Coming from somebody who's written reviews, it's really hard not to put spoilers in there. And you almost have to put some spoilers in there to kind of talk about what the game is. And I don't want someone disclosing to me the super cool power that you get halfway through the game. Because it kind of takes away from the excitement of it when you finally get it. And it takes the anticipation of like, oh, I wonder what's next. I do like reading reviews after because then I can be like, am I crazy? Or am I the only one that thought this? Or... I will admit, though, that, Anything like that I'll go on and I'll just kind of look at a general consensus of scores, although I think I think scores are kind of crappy because they're so subjective or they're so they're so, um, yeah, subjective to that person's uh, opinion. But if I'm looking at a game across the board and it's getting fours and fives, like eh, maybe I'll pass and I'll rent it. Right. But if this game's getting nines across the board, OK, maybe I'll give it a shot. I, I don't look at reviews. At all, I like I like pre uh, not at all. I like previews. I go yeah. they talk about the game and they say, "Oh, this is coming out," and this is they think it's really good. But I don't I don't look for reviews for a game. I mean, occasionally you're gonna find out the ones that suck are always terrible because everybody tells you that, that you know it's got a terrible review. No, but also you can look you can look at the game and go, "This game looks like." Fraud. Coming from somebody who worked at GameStop, I know I used to do this in the past, but I don't think anybody ever knew I was doing it. Otherwise, I probably would have lost my job. But when people would come up to buy a game that I very clearly knew was a shitty game, I would tell people that game is shit. So well, I do it all the did time. you? Were you telling people that when they were trying to come up and buy Aliens or the new Walking Dead game? Uh, yeah, I said apparently this got really bad reviews. But if you're a fan of the show and you and you want to follow the story of these two, I guess it's worth the playthrough. But and if you're a fan of the Aliens, it's it maybe worth the playthrough of the story. But the game is pretty much crap. And they go, okay, thanks for the advice. And they buy it anyway. 
and they buy it anyway. Jesus. But the only thing I do not sell is I do not sell Haze. I do not sell Two Worlds 1. I do not sell Two Worlds 2. Hey, I bought a copy of Two Worlds 2 Velvet Gaudi Edition for $5 on PSN Plus, and that game was worth 5 bucks. Well, maybe that one, but I can tell you that that game's terrible. The first game's junk. The second game's a little bit better. And uh, I'll, you know, and the guys, and every time I do sell it because they don't believe me, I they're back the next day, if not the same day, returning the game, and they said, "I'm sorry, you were right." I'm like, "Yeah." True. Uh, Christopher <laughs> wanted to suggest Dragon Ball Z Legendary Super Warriors for Game Boy Color. I've played enough Dragon Ball Z games in my time to know that I will not enjoy that game. <laughs> I think I remember playing this one. Um, I recently, I think it was about a year ago. I guess to me that's recent. But um, I recently got a bunch of the uh, Dragon Ball Z games on the uh, on the emulator for the Game Boy Advance a while back. I don't know what happened to them. I lost them somewhere. I think it was on my old computer. And uh, I do remember that they're they're simple to play on the Game Boy Advance because there's two buttons. Hmm. Hmm. But again, yeah, they're they don't. It was pretty good. I'll see if I can find that and I'll I'll play that one. Roy Linton writes in, says it's his first time emailing. Just started listening to your podcast and really enjoy it. I've begun going back to the classic game systems and have even gotten my two sons on board with all the retro games I've been collecting as of late. My boys and I have been playing through the Mega Man Anniversary Collection for the GameCube. Fantastic choice. I have to honestly say, out of all the Mega Mans, I really like three the most, but that could just be leftover memories from when I was a kid, and it was the first one I ever beat. The first Mega Man I never played till I got this collection, which I find is pretty common among a lot of people. I remember playing Mega Man 2, but could never get past Quick Man stage. It frustrated me so bad I never wanted to go back to it, even though I loved the boss battle. So when 3 released, I was excited, and hopefully they didn't have a stage like that. I like 3 due to the introduction of Proto Man, and it even had you take on all 8 of the Robot Masters from Mega Man 2. It was fun ride. Beating it again now as an adult still held up. My question for you, for you is, of all the classic Mega Man games, which one do you like the most? Thanks, Roy. I think we covered this already, but I just wanted to read his email. Um, definitely 2, hands down. I'd have to go with the same. And Jess has... I'd have to go with a crappy memory. No opinion. All right. Because I'm the worst. I'm going to just say, Ryan, Yeti, Nick, we got your email. So don't get super pissed off, <laughs> pissed off at us for not reading it. But none of us played the second chapter of Mother 3 this week. So that's that's on the docket for next show. Uh, George Vosper writes in, I listen to your podcast at work, and not only does it make the time go by, I have so much fun listening. When I listen, I agree and disagree with you, but most of all, I get angry when I want to correct you. Awesome. I can't, though. Oh, well. Everyone's pretty cool, and I wanted to not only suggest a game, but ask a question. I suggest to you Zelda 2. Also, as I was thinking of making a podcast of my own but I don't know how to gather people or even execute such a project. Any tips, suggestions, or anything else to say? Thanks. Um, Zelda 2, I think we've talked about that a little bit before, haven't we? A little bit. I'm gonna, yeah. I remember we talked about how it's uh, like totally different than all the other Zelda games. I'm going to put that on my list because I've never given that game a true fair shake. I always get to the part where you meet the guy named Error and then I chuckle and turn it off. <laughs> so I'm going to put that one down. Poor guy. Oh, before he, I forget. Here's another, here's another one yeah, too. Yeah, before I forget. Did you guys see the video for the new 3DS Zelda game? Yes. Did you watch it, Aaron? No. They announced a brand new Zelda game for 3DS that is a, I don't, not a sequel, but it takes place in the same world as A Link to the Past. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Mind-blowing. So awesome. We'll talk about that later. Huh. He's got, I'm so excited. Did bring that up to me. Did that just get announced like since Tuesday? Uh, they, they had a Nintendo Direct conference a couple days ago, and... Uh, you can go online. You can download it on your 3DS if you have one. They've, they have a full 3D video, and it's huh. it's super right. cool because they've they've the, the the way that the levels are constructed is they're you know how the the Zelda games have always had the different levels of the towers. They've got some levels where you can hop on these springs and jump up to the next level, or they've got this new feature where it's it's kind of like super paper. super Paper Mario where you can press yourself against a wall and walk around the corner and and uh, huh. it's kind of gimmicky, but I think it's pretty cool. I feel like I'm gonna forget about that feature. Yeah. 
I think that'll just be a gimmick. Um, George has a little follow up for us. He said, "Hello, Factory Sealed people of the podcast universe." That's online. Okay, I'm getting an SNES soon, and is wondering some suggestions of games to get. I like RPGs the most, and Final Fantasy. Also, I feel weird about this, but I would love to make it to the next show because even though I'm 18, I have a lot of not only input but memories of the past. I'm sure I could get really into chat with you and I with what I know, and I think it would be interesting to get a younger speaker in which you could see another point of view. If you decide not to bring me on... Shut up. We're young. Oh, well. <laughs> I won't have a tantrum. I was just thinking of a way to make the podcast more interesting and have an idea of where some people are coming from. Also, I can defend my favorite games from Eric and correct you guys. This guy makes oh, it sound like we're wrong all the time. Best regards. An old... Mr. Chief. We're old and also wrong. Also George Fosper. <laughs> I'm gonna. Well, you are old. I'm gonna make. I'm the youngest person on this podcast. Bullshit. It's true. That by is, years. Yeah. You're 12. <laughs> I'm an old hag. If he likes RPGs, I'm gonna make a few suggestions for him. Number one, go back and listen to our show where we talked about Illusion of Gaia. Hands down, one of the best RPGs. Um, Lufia and the Fortress of Doom, and then Lufia Two: Rise of the Sinistrals. Um, off the top of my head, Secret of Mana, Robotrek. That's another Enix game that was uh, kind of along the same lines as Illusion of Gaia. Super Mario RPG. And if you want a terrible game to play, that's uh, uh, play Mystic Quest. No, no. An option of Final <laughs> no, that is like the Pedialyte of Final Fantasies. It's, <laughs> it's good. Games. It's good. I'm shaking my head. You can't see me. It's good, Aaron. I'm, sh- I'm shaking my head. Final Fantasy Mystic Quest is not bad. It's an on okay. ra- it's a, it's an on rails RPG. It's like the super. Yeah, what do you mean by Pedialyte though? Don't you know what Pedialyte is? I know Pedialyte like is like the baby formula for version for diarrhea. No, it's not. It's for babies or for yeah, hangovers. It... No, but like babies have it. <laughs> like you would have Gatorade. True story. Anyway, you just. Anyway. Totally ruin that joke. You're a jo- stupid analogy. <laughs> I, I kind of got your joke. But. Jokes are instantly less funny once you have to explain them. Um, Shut up. Any other well, suggestions? Here's, uh, here, I think we should maybe call. Uh, we should probably bring this up because um, we get a lot of people asking uh, to be on the show. Um, we, we've tried having a guest on, and of course we've, we've had some some special guests come on. And uh, you know it's something that we can we can probably do in the in the future. I'm, I'm thinking, guys. But uh, I've noticed on the the four people shows are a little bit uh, hectic. Hectic, yeah. And I think you know I, I didn't mind too much when Matt was on because I jumped off right away after the introductions and stuff. Because uh, <laughs> I bailed on you guys, but I no bailed, big deal. I'm sorry. But uh, you know, like it definitely, it's a it's a lot of uh, well, and I think a I've, lot of stuff going on at once. I'm on a podcast where there's four people, and it works fine because three of them are in the studio together, and they can they can see each other when they want to talk. But when you're all doing this from different parts of the country, it's it's kind of hard to fall into that groove of who's going to talk and when they're going to talk. And right. when you get more than three people, it really starts to sound muddled. So I'm not saying it's it's not going to happen. But not right now. Yeah. But we appreciate you asking. I mean, and when it, if if we decide to bring somebody in as a guest spot, we'll keep it in mind. Um, and I, I personally, because I would like to bring some of you guys on and talk to you and then meet you guys, and this might be the only I way think to do so. I think but, what uh, what might be better is instead of having people on for a full show, maybe pull them in. You know, have them have them queued up in Skype, and then pull them in for questions yeah. or a short short brief conversation. Yeah, that that might work good. And play um, games would be so fun. Yeah. Right. So if you let us know in advance, l- let's do this. If if you're going to be playing a game that we're going to be playing for the week and you feel really passionate about it and you would like to have a, a short discussion with us about it, um, let us know via email or, or something and we'll... Uh, We'll talk about possibly trying that segment out because, you know, we're always trying to evolve and, and make new segments to the show that people might like. So I guess. Well, another good, another, maybe this is after show topic, but 
is it possible for them to record um, maybe their thoughts that get on and say like a five minute thing about what they thought about the game they played and send send the audio file to us and then we can just put it on in the segment of the show? You know, or is that too much of a hassle? No, that's not a bad idea either. I think that would be I think that would be interesting. Then we could all listen to it and then just plug that in. Just it'd be a lot of post edit. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, that might be that might be the really cool way because uh, people can then get their opinions out and be part of the show and make it a lot easier than because you know yeah. getting us three together is sometimes a real pain in the ass. Trying to get a fourth yeah, person Aaron. together is. I know, Clark. <laughs> <laughs> I suck. There's that bus. Damn jobs. Oh. <laughs> uh. So yeah, that might be that might be a good deal. We might have to look into that. So yeah. see if people respond to that. We definitely want to keep people being a part of the show and, and we we definitely appreciate the emails and the game opinions. Um mm-hmm. hopefully we can start getting some more interaction now that we've kind of for some reason are really yeah. late to the Facebook game. And if you're sending us emails and you talk about how they like to correct us, please send us a correction in the email. I believe one of our first shows oh man, I don't remember that he had a like a long name Vit- Vitters or Vesters. Vic or- Mees. Vic Mies, there we go. He goes oh, cracking his him. left and right. I don't I haven't heard from him in a long time. We don't claim but, to be uh, professionals. We're just some, no, some people. Yeah. We're, a lot of this is coming from strictly memory. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, feel free to give us those corrections and let us know and uh, you know, help us keep his back straight. So, but uh, you can tell Eric how wrong he is in, on the email. I'm never wrong. <laughs> All right. What's on the docket for next week? I've got zombies. Oh, but I think we skipped an email because I clicked on it earlier. Which one? Do we read Donovan's? No, we we missed Donovan. Oh. Oh. Donovan Elsie's. Yeah, because I replied to Donovan, actually. Look at you go. That's right. Oh. Who wants to read it? I'm just trying to comprehend I'm trying to comprehend the complexity of the the sentence you constructed for your reply. (laughs) I taught English. For, for years, and that makes no sense. Anyway, hey. What, what do you mean it makes no sense? I'll get to it. Hey, it's, it's it's Donovan Elsie again. I have a few opinions on the game that you played in the past. I decided to play Goof Troop. Oh, Jesus Christ. Even though you and many others said it was a pile of crap, within the first five minutes of playing, I had seen enough. Thank God. No more Goof Troop for me, ever. When you said that you would play Link's Awakening DX, my heart skipped a beat. I got the game a few years ago on the actual Game Boy Color. I didn't play my Wii, my DS, or my Xbox for months. That's how much I love this game. Recently got it on the 3DS Virtual Console and nearly played through it. That's all for my opinions. My question is, do you think that all of the huge gaming companies like Nintendo have gotten better or worse in game quality? And the reply, he says, no such thing as long email with us. Have you heard the way do emails? Yeah, he says, sorry for this long... Sorry this email oh, was so long. Oh, I forgot the Wii when I did I typed it on my phone. Leave me alone. <laughs> I see what you mean now. Because he goes, sorry the email is so long, which you forgot to read. And I said, no such thing as a long email with us. And then and then I said, have you heard the way we do emails? Because we wait till the end, we don't screen them, have... and we just read. And then Eric is like trying to read it out loud to himself before he goes out <laughs> And then... <laughs> Have you heard the way we do email? <laughs> There's no we though. Have you heard the way? There's do no we. I forgot. Totally forgot to put the we in there. Or my autocorrect it took it away. I don't know. Your phone <laughs> is phone. dumb. It's an iPhone. What do you expect? It's dumb. Shut up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you think all the huge gaming companies like Nintendo have gotten better or worse in quality? I'm gonna say worse. With the ex- I would say that's a very broad... It is. It, I think it, we should narrow it down to first party. their first-party titles. We can't say the company as a whole. Yes. Um, yeah. I think they've gotten lazy. Yes. Because they're just rehashing old ideas. I mean, when's the last time we, we had a new, innovative Mario game? True Mario game. What was it? Mario Galaxy? The first one? Yeah. That was the Wii one that came out. With. And then and number it. two is just a rehash. And then you can't really say New Super Mario Brothers was new because it was... You could do four players, man. It was a mix between the original Mario Brothers and Super Mario World. And that was it. So they just rehashed... They're rehashing old ideas and they're just shoveling crap out. And yeah, I think major game companies have gotten much worse. Not in terms of the quality of their game, but they're just lazy. We've played yeah. this before. But they've evolved well, to not have to. 
Well, and the gaming community is not really doing anything to prevent them from getting worse. They're still buying the same crap over and over. Yeah. Well, here's the... I think we brought this up on a few episodes back, maybe the first or second episode that we did. But if you guys remember, and if Eric, you have any sitting next to you, if you look at all of your Nintendo games, your SNES games, and I believe even the N64 games. I've got my whole pile right see, here. You will see on there Nintendo's, Nintendo seal of quality. Let's see. Of the ones I have, Simon's Quest, Castlevania 2, Nintendo, seal of quality. Mario 3, Nintendo, seal of quality. Ninja Gaiden, seal of quality. Dracula, now, Super Contra. If you were to look at a Felix. Wii game, if you were to look at a Wii game and or I think GameCube when they started this, you will look on there and it no longer says Nintendo yeah. seal of quality. It says Nintendo's stamp of shovelware shit. <laughs> because Nintendo was so strict on what they could put on their systems that they had to be good. But the problem is, I think it was in 64 when it came out, they just were not getting the, enough games because they were too picky. Yeah. Same with the GameCube. And then by the time the Wii came out, they were like, fine, just make whatever piece of shit you want so we can make some money off this unit. And they took away the thing that it said, Nintendo seal of quality. Yeah. And now it, it just said Nintendo. It says you might like so, this game. But yeah. we're getting paid lots of money. Hmm. Right. So, yeah, I mean, that's where it comes, that's where it comes down to. And, and really, it's... Is it the, them getting lazy, or is it the people that are growing up that started those old games and just trying to keep doing that? And now it's the point where we're, what's the next thing that you can do for a game console? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. okay, you have the first-version shooters, you have the RPGs, but nothing's come out since, you know, a, Oblivion on the Xbox. That was, like, mind-blowing game-changing. And even Oblivion was just a rehashing of... Morrowind. Of Morrowind. Morrowind yeah. was like truly the revolutionary game in terms of, of open world 3D RPGs. Right, and I guess I, 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 Morrowind is what I should have said, not Oblivion, yeah. Um, but there's just nothing you know, else you can do. Heavy Rain was a big game changer, but then that was yeah. the only one they made. They but, haven't made one. But if you look at that, that Heavy way. Rain was just a rehashing of Indigo Prophecy. Mm-hmm. So it's... it's That's the name of that game. So many games are just rehashings of stuff that's been done before. But then I think I read this on Reddit actually. Apparently Shakespeare says there's only nine stories that you could ever tell. Nine? Nine. There are like that combinations of those nine. Yeah. But there's nine basic like plots that you could ever tell. I could believe that. Yeah, mm. that's that's believable. I mean everything's a rehash. You write anything and it's like, okay, well that's just another story of how that happened or yeah. change that up. You just change names or dates or times or yeah. anything. And it's look at Hollywood, man. Jeez. But, uh, yeah, games is getting tough. It's hard to find something very original where you're like, man. That's why I kind of like going back to these retro games because it, it goes back to, you can make these comparisons to modern games like we're doing with the immortal and saying, wow, this is a lot like demon souls or and to be proper. Demon souls is a lot like this. Right. I'm wondering too if because we're not looking for the new graphics and the fancy new technology that you're able to focus on the story a little bit more. Yeah, I could see that. I think so. I mean, you look at uh, look at some of the games that are out there, especially for 360. They're like three or four discs, but like one of the discs is literally just all movie. You know, like it's a little bit of gameplay and then the cutscene for the the storyline. Jeez. Um, is that then you know the files are so big like lost i think lost odyssey's that way yeah i was gonna say that's either lost um, odyssey or blue dragon mm-hmm. yeah blue dragon had a lot of video too but uh um you know it's just getting too much of that and not enough uh you know story we're like back in the old days like uh good on like xeno xeno gears is a great oh. one to use an example we need the to game is good gameplay and then the great storyline but unfortunately it was all text storyline, really. <laughs> we need to do a Xeno Gears show. That game is so good. Yeah, that's going to be way down the road, though. And they haven't made one like it. No, they came out with the Xeno Saga, which is a pile of crap. It wasn't. Cra- <laughs> it wasn't crap. It was just hours and hours of watching. Oh, it's crap. All three of. Them. <laughs> I suppose. And they were like prequels, the Xeno Gears, which didn't even lead up to anything. Sorry. Have we figured what we're going to play next week? You know, uh, okay. 
that's it. that's it for emails, right? We didn't skip any more. I think so. I don't hold see. on, hold on. We need to check Maybe. the spam folder. Oh yeah. Uh, Does she want her money back? By the way, did you ever get that her lady her money? I did. I sent it. I sent over the five thousand, and I'm still waiting for my one point two million. So nice. I'll let you know when that oh, comes. No, in. they're just the crap from uh, whatever. All right. No, nothing um, we've got on the on the list. Zombies ate my neighbors. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'll play through the whole thing, but zombies ate my neighbors. Uh, Zelda two again, probably not the whole thing, but uh, I want to give that game a bit more of a fair shake. Um, I want to make a suggestion because as I was digging through my pile of NES games that were sitting here, I came across one from my childhood that I don't know why it sticks out for me, but I really, really enjoy it. And that's little Nemo dream master. I remember that game. Now I want to make a, I want to make a a suggestion that we do. uh, This would be, I think this would be the first time we do this. I want to play this game and then compare it with the movie. Uh, I don't remember the movie. No. Well, you have the internet at your fingertips. <laughs> we can we can watch the movie. Okay. I'm gonna do that. I don't care if you get because right. I have the movie on on Divid. How about how about this? <laughs> what? How about we try something new this time too? How about we each take a game and and focus on that game? Okay. What what which one do you want, Jess? Um, Eric's already called his little Nemo. We'll we'll all Apparently. three play parts of all of them, but then we'll each right. focus on one. All right, that makes sounds good. Um, I'd be interested to play um, Zelda more. All right, that leaves you with it, zombies ate my zombies. I will Is that zombie. cool with you? That's cool. I hate being yeah, the person I'm to not, pick I'm things. I'm that guy that's not a Zelda fan. Yeah, I'm that I'm that douche. All right, so those are our three games. Are we gonna? We should shoot for next week if we can, and then if not, it'll be the week after. Deal with it. <laughs> there we go. All right. If you want to write right. in any uh, questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, pictures, is there anything else they can send us um, through email? Money. Okay. You can send us money. Reverse cash. Money. Reverse requests for money. Uh, factory sealed at manatank dot com or facebook dot com slash factory sealed please join us on facebook now aaron where can we find you on twitter at quilted tunic jess at badass tat (laughs) (laughs) whiskers at jess m clark and you can follow me at honest pizza that's gonna do it for this week Uh, hopefully we'll be back next week until then We'll